What's up everybody, Brian Tong here, and I've been waiting a few weeks before doing my Mac OS Catalina review because I'm not just gonna throw Catalina on there right away. I've got work to do on my machine, so I really wanted the dust to clear some, and now I've been using it for about a week. Now before we get to the review, big thanks to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. I've legit used this app over the years, and before upgrading to Mac OS Catalina, you should clean up your Mac and optimize it before you upgrade. Clean My Mac X does just that, it detects your legacy 32-bit apps, it can delete them or find the 64-bit versions of the apps and then update those for you. And if you own a Mac, it's really just one of those staple apps to have. So check out the link below to learn more and download a free trial for Clean My Mac X. All right, let's get into Mac OS Catalina and before you install it, come on, step one, please, please back up your hard drive. Whatever you need to do, do it, just back it up first. Now, after that, you'll have some decisions before you upgrade. Now, make sure all of your crucial apps are compatible. You might have some legacy apps that are 32-bit apps, and Catalina is really the cutoff where your apps need to be 64-bit apps to work. Now, Apple even warned us about this happening years ago, so when you first run the Catalina installer, it will show you a list of your apps that will no longer work. Now, from there, you can either choose to not upgrade or see if the developer makes 64-bit versions of those apps, update them, and then you can upgrade your OS. It really just depends on how crucial they are, and yeah, you know, you can see I've been using an old, old copy of Office so that I wouldn't have to pay for their subscription service because you would do it too. Now, there are still ways to use your legacy 32-bit apps with Parallels Desktop or VMware Fusion. It does take a few steps, but we're not going to get into them here. So let's just jump ahead now, and I've got macOS Catalina here on my machine. You got that nice, bold kind of desktop of the Catalina Island. It, it looks beautiful. But the best thing about macOS Catalina for me, honestly, is that it just feels snappier to me, probably because it's a new install, but it is clean. Mac OS Mojave was really more about UI, navigation, and organization, while Catalina brings more changes to the apps and then a few features. Now, Apple, they really don't need to do anything drastic unless they want to finally give us some level of like a touch hybrid OS, which is not going to be happening anytime soon. So the biggest new flashy feature for me is Sidecar that just like lets me use my iPad as an extended display, and I think it's real useful. Because, for example, with an app like Adobe Premiere, I can use the iPad screen like a secondary display, and it gives me a lot more space to edit, see my timeline, or I can even use like a web browser on the iPad to find assets I need as well. Now in Photoshop, I can mirror the screen and handle some tasks like using the magnetic lasso to trace around objects with the Apple Pencil instead of using the trackpad. And I know it's a luxury because I'm so used to working on a single screen when I'm on the go just with my laptop and I'm still getting used to this dual screen, but so far I like it a lot, but I don't know if I'm gonna be really using it all the time either. We also know in another big move, iTunes, the iTunes that we know is dead. It's dead in Catalina. They broke up the band, so now when you connect your phone to it, it shows up in the Finder for you to manage backups, restores, and all aspects of your device. The music app is obviously for your music, but for someone like me without an Apple Music subscription, it feels like it's kind of missing half of what it needs to feel complete. So I'm not going to subscribe yet, but that really enhances it if you have that. Then we have the podcast app. It's pretty straightforward. And if you haven't already, you might want to check out a podcast called the Apple Bits XL. It covers everything inside the world of Apple. Wow, look, there's 944 reviews with a five-star average. Like I told you, I heard it's pretty good and you can't make that up. Now also the TV app is easily the best looking of the bunch. It's the most visual and it'll be the home for Apple's new Apple TV Plus service as well as your movie purchases and rentals. And here's the weird thing. Like I like the idea of iTunes and it's over bloated size going away, but then having three apps with three icons and then also using the Finder to sync instead of having everything in one place. I think the apps look a lot cleaner, but then pulling them apart is a little more work for my brain. You know, for me, I do so much work all my work on my laptop more than anything else. And my iPhone and my iPad have become my entertainment devices. So, wow, how, how first world did that just sound? My iPad and iPhone are my entertainment devices. But I don't think I'll be using those three apps broken up that much anyways on my MacBook Pro. And I won't have them taking up space on my dock. Other apps are getting some fine tuning. Notes is an app that I use all the time. And the new functionality and then new ways to view your notes along with being able to share the notes to work collaboratively is really nice. The Photos app gets a visual upgrade with how it organizes pretty much everything. So the aesthetic is more pleasing to the eye. It reminds me of just how iOS handles displaying photos and videos in a feed. The Reminders app has been completely redone, but I still haven't used it because 
I kind of got used to rarely using it all these years. I'm gonna have to see if it becomes part of my habits. And then also the new Find My app, it combines your friends and devices together in one place. We've seen this on iOS. It's visually nice for the Mac, but it won't really get you back your iPhone Pro if it happened to be just be stolen and then turned off while you're playing a basketball game during your league. So, yeah, that was me. So it won't help there, but it does help detect your other devices when they're active and can be seen. Now in a security feature that's under the hood, macOS Catalina is installed on one partition while all your other files and data, they're installed on a separate one, which really means that third-party software can't mess around with the operating system. So macOS and your data now, right, they're on two different volumes. That means you're gonna get apps that ask for your permission to ask for things like the documents folder. Uh, if you're using the desktop, when you run these apps for the first time, it only happens once, it just wants to get that permission, but it can be a little annoying. But an OS can be fun too. You'll get access to Apple Arcade and its games through the App Store. You can even check out my review of why I'm just very high on the Apple Arcade service, even if I don't have that much time to use it for myself, but I think it's excellent. So, you know, you add all these things together, What's really the final verdict on macOS Catalina? There are still many people that are having issues here and there, and I was honestly reluctant to do the upgrade at first. My honest advice is that if you're running a lot of 32-bit apps that won't be able to function, obviously that's typically a lot of these media content creation apps or utilities that you love from the past, obviously do not, do not upgrade to macOS Catalina. My key creative apps like Photoshop and Premiere, they work just fine, but then one of my audio leveling apps for my podcast called Levelator, it doesn't. But if 32-bit apps aren't holding you back and you really just want the new apps and features, then you're really that right kind of user who should upgrade. But just to be clear, right, there are still bugs here and there. Some people's systems have reportedly just been bricking. So that's not even a joke, right? That needs to be worked out with future software updates. It might typically affect some of the earlier hardware, but still, uh, you don't really need to upgrade if you're really happy with your system right now. I would just say, let them resolve those issues and then just stick with what you have. Now, I haven't found myself honestly drastically using macOS really differently at all, but the improvements, they are solid additions, but they haven't been crucial for me yet. So overall, macOS Catalina, it's a nice upgrade, but you don't always have to upgrade right away, right? There's no big rush. Just be patient with it and then upgrade when the time is right for you. So thanks again to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Before you upgrade to Catalina, you should probably clean it up first. Clean My Mac X can get rid of the old 32-bit apps you no longer use, and it can find the 64-bit apps that you need to update and then update them for you. It deletes system junk, unseen apps, and hidden clutter. You even saw that I saved 12.4 gigs of storage. I got it all back after running the app. They say the average user gets 30 gigs back. It can help speed up your Mac, remove malware and adware, and then prep your computer for the next big upgrade. So go to the link below to learn more and download a trial version for Clean My Mac X from MacPaw. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Peace.